A big welcome to the 1010 Book Club Sharing. I am your host, Billy Chan, and today I'm going to show you how to get a bigger bite out of life. Today we are going to have Hayley James. She is an author of two books, one in Business Success Principle and another one in Personal Growth and Prosperity. Hayley is an international speaker. She is a master practitioner and certified trainer in Neuro Linguistic Programming, NLP. She is the coach, guide, and mentor in personal and business transformations. She has trained and worked with individuals, startups, small business owners, and organizations in many industry sectors across the United Kingdom, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Australia. She has helped many people to reach their full potential and achieve their personal growth, prosperity, and success in all aspects of their life. Let's join me in this very interesting sharing. Without further ado, let us hear the conversation that I have with Hayley James. Today, uh, we are very delighted to have Hayley, Hayley James. She is calling in from uh, Australia. Apparently, uh, she should be having her lunch right now, but she, <laughs> she chose to spend her time uh, with us uh, doing this, this sharing. And uh, a bit of introduction of Hayley. Uh, Hayley, she is an author of two books, one in Business Success Principle and in uh, Personal Growth and Prosperity. In fact, I have uh, this book on my hand. Uh, this is the uh, How to Get a Bigger Bite Out of Life, Power Back Ideas for Personal Growth and Prosperity. Uh, this is a very, uh, um, I would say that uh, pack content as a full of content, uh, full of like a, a small bite side of information that you can get off uh, from chapter to chapters. There's probably uh, seven big chapters here that you can go through. Um, I believe that for a normal reader that reads 200 words per per minute, you're able to finish this book within uh, four hours. Uh, just after you wake up to lunch and then you can finish all this book. And today we are also going to share about uh, this book uh, that uh, Haley will share this uh, more in depth with us. Oh. I put together some slides for you just as a means of uh, stepping through what seven steps are that we'll cover today that will help you to get a bigger bite out of life. Now, it's a big title for a little book, um, and it's really, I want to break it down for you. So I don't want you to worry about what the terms are called. I just want you to try and get the message behind the terms. So as a snapshot, the seven steps for you to elevate your life personally and professionally are to improve your individual capacity, Develop what I call mature judgment, putting purpose in your life by setting goals, and controlling your mind power and developing a, a, the right attitude, building courage so we can face our fears head on and break through any fears that we might have, and do what I call develop the human touch and take action on stepping forward in your life on the things that will move you forward and help you produce results in your work and in your life as well. So that's a snapshot of seven steps for how to get a bigger bite out of life. And I'm just going to take you through each one um, as we go through. So what is this thing called improving your individual capacity? Well, we're here at the 1010 Book Club and that's exactly what this concept is all about. It's all about learning and reading um, through books. So the next slide, Billy, um, will just uh, um, encapsulate this because as uh, you all know, as avid readers, within every book, there is a message and there is a metaphor for life. There is uh, something that we can connect to uh, and, and, the, and that resonates with us that can actually make a significant change and shift in us. And books are really powerful. 
Um, and it, when it comes to learning and um, helping us improve our own um, individual capacity, then learning from experts or what I call other people's experiences um, is what helps us to actually learn quicker and uh, learn the lesson quicker and um, not make the mistakes that others have made. It kind of helps us to um, get to where we want to go much quicker. So books are really powerful for us in lots of ways um, in that they help transport us into uh, imaginary worlds and it also helps to um, uh, resonate messages for us that can help shift us from our current state to where we want to be. So here are some books and, and thanks Billy for recording this so that you've got a snapshot of some of the books that have significantly changed my life. Um, and there's a kind of eclectic mix there of books. And if you've, um, some of them are really quite uh, uh, old books that have been around for a long time, and some of them are, uh, are fairly new. Um, Angela Duckworth is, is one that I read uh, during the Christmas uh, break um, called Grit. And, uh, and who would have known that uh, that's what we need more of is grit, determination, the ability to um, adapt and pivot. Uh, and who knew that that was the skills that we were going to need in the next few months coming forward. So every book has a message. And if you tap into and read any one of those books, you will, um, you will, um, you will experience that uh, a message within each of those books. And Haley, we have, we have shared uh, in this Tenta book club before, uh, like the uh, Think and Grow Rich by the Napoleon Hill. It's, oh yes, I, I believe it's this uh, uh, last year somewhere in the October or November time frame. Uh, how to win friends and influence people uh, that also been shared before. Seven highly, seven habits of highly successful people. This is a hot, hot <laughs> book that right. uh, everyone like. And uh, we we actually have those uh, the seven habits book in our ten ten uh, grab and glow grab and go library in a PG twelve. If you guys are interested. Go there and uh, check that out as well. And I've, oh. I've also got, um, he, he's also written The Eighth Habit. So that's the <laughs> follow one from this one. Um, so, so get that one as well. But um, oh yes, I mean, there's so many books on personal growth, um, motivation and, and, and mindset that, um, that can, can help carry you forward. So that's great. We're all, a, we're all on the same page. If, um, if we've read uh, some of those books together, that's great. This, this will be a good uh, reading list. Haley, you listed 12 books here. Uh, would you uh, recommend which, which one that uh, people should pick up first and, 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 and read it if they have not yet? Uh, what would you say and why? Oh, okay. Um, I like number 11 um, most recently because it was a book that I, um, uh, I picked up specifically to help me with a uh, leadership program training that I was putting together. And it, it helped me to uh, piece together some, some examples for helping others understand um, that we all think differently depending on how we sense information and how we take in information through our senses, uh, whether we are auditory people or digital people or auditory digital or kinesthetic people. And if you learn a little bit more about all of that, it really helps us to understand not only ourselves more and in the way that in which we like to learn um, and respond to people, but also how others like to learn so that we can adapt our own communication style to suit them. So um, the four mindsets is, is, uh, is a great one. Um, and the little prince is just a gorgeous little one. If you have children, um, it's a gorgeous little fairy tale book. Uh, but it's one of those fairy tale books that is meant for adults as well uh, because of the powerful message behind it as well. Mm. Thank you. And let's uh, pull on the next one. If we would, okay. So our second step is to develop mature judgment. And this is what NLP really is all about. And so the next slides 
uh, Julie just explains that more. So NLP really is about daily practice, just like yoga practice, uh, a daily practice of attitude, setting an intent uh, to have uh, things happen in your life or, or uh, make, make them happen within your life that day. And what it does, it allows you to think differently, communicate more effectively, and essentially NLP is all about the way that we think and why we think the way we think. So if you're somebody who is really curious by nature, you will love learning more about NLP, how the brain works, how we, um, how we interpret and, and take in information through our senses, and how we can influence others through um, our own projections and our own communication and how we can um, uh, create better links and, of communicating. So that's essentially what developing mature judgment is. It's about uh, having that inquiring mind of how I can uh, communicate better with this person so that we can both attain a win-win outcome. So important in work, important in, in our personal lives as well. It's about how we can all get what we want out of life. Kelly, before we move on to the next one, I have a, an address for the interrupt. I wanted to get, get some thought of here, right? When you say NLP is, is, uh, uh, is, is the way, can, can I ask you how, how that NLP changes your life? And then like, like uh, probably before that and after that or, or, or in any sequence that you might like, how, how is that change, change, change you and then uh, probably improve your life in, uh, per se with this, these techniques and skills uh, of NLP? I think it's more awareness. So now that I'm aware of um, thoughts and the impact that thoughts has on your emotions and how you feel, and when you understand that, you realize that if you have a negative thought come in, you realize that you can do something about that. You have the control and the ability to choose your thoughts. So we all think negative thoughts from time to time, but we can choose to, as that thought bubble comes in, we can choose to uh, be bogged down by that thought and be impacted by it or we can choose to move on that little thought bubble and, and, and change. Uh, and we can change just like that. And that's what NLP made me realize. It's um, awareness of something such so simple like controlling your thoughts, how big an impact that has on a daily basis. So it's it just every single thing. We, we, we all have these voices in our heads, right? It's not just me. <laughs> and, and we have voices that talk to us in a positive sense and voices that talk to us in a negative sense. And human beings, we tend to dial up the negative voice and dial down the, uh, the good voice. And it's about uh, being aware that you can change that kind of like having a remote control on the, on the television um, and you can change that. So it's had a profound effect on my life on a daily basis, on everything that I do. And I hope in the people that I interact with as well. Hmm. Thanks, uh, all this positive attitude are so contagious and um, <laughs> showing it. And, uh, and and people like to use this analogy of um, I I would like to use the analogy of uh, um, take life uh, situation as a thermostat and not a thermometer. So when you are thermometer, sorry, when you are thermometer, you just uh, you 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 just read it right. So oh, this is good. I read it as good or read it as bad. But uh, what you have mentioned about uh, we need to be the thermostat of our life that uh, if if. If right now it's like uh, very hot, I just tune up to be a bit cooler. And if this is uh, hot, it's, it's twisted to be uh, some environment that is suitable for for us. I think I think this is the message that you you have shared just now. Yeah. Oh, I like that one. I'm going to can I use that one? Yeah, <laughs> please, your, please. your thermometer, your thermometer yeah, yeah, of, sure. of feelings and emotions. I like that. I like okay. that. 
<laughs> yes. And, Feel free and to I steal think, it, everyone. <laughs> I steal that one. And and I think essentially, um, for me, what NLP has done for me, it's helped me to kind of um, uh, have that missing piece of my jigsaw puzzle of life and find what that is um, and to be able to work on it every single day. So, um, you know, people have always said to me, Hayley, you're always so happy. And I've always thought, well, I don't want to be sad because I always had this um, ability to recognise that um, I like it when I feel happy because when you feel happy, when you smile, um, you're, you set off um, happy chemicals in, in, your, in your brain. That's the endorphins. It, it's very similar to um, how you feel after exercise. So I much prefer to feel happy because I like how it feels, how I feel in my body uh, when I'm feeling good and positive rather than being um, negative, being sad. It changes your physiology. And when I learned this, then it really made sense to me and it was kind of like I found my missing piece of my jigsaw puzzle of life and it made sense for me. So it's what I call their distinctions. So it really is the little things that we do and the little things that we change that can make a really big difference for us in our lives. So we'll have the next one. And the third one is putting life, um, putting purpose in your life with goals. Now, many of us have dreams, ambitions, and a, a dream is just a dream unless we put that uh, dream down to paper and we need to write out our goal um, in, in written form. And you have to remember with goals that it is a step-by-step -step process and it's one taking the first step that will lead you to the next step and the next step and it's perseverance and it's um, having an attitude of what do I need to do today that will help me get one step further towards my goal? Or what is the one thing that I can do right now that will help me get one step closer to my goal? And I think what we tend to do as human beings, and it's really natural, is we tend to um, overestimate what we can do in the short term and we grossly underestimate what we can do in the long term. So I would um, encourage you to really set yourselves some um, goals that are um, short term and intermediate and long term and really stretch yourself and work towards how you can implement um, the first step and towards actioning that um, you know, every, every single day. Um, and that will really give you purpose and make you feel at the end of the day that you have achieved um, and will keep, keep you motivated to keep going. So setting goals, putting purpose in your life by setting goals, but actually writing down your goals and then committing, them, committing to them is what will help you reach your goals. Can I move to the next one? Yeah, sure. All right, okay. <laughs> So what we're talking about here is um, getting you out of your comfort zone because 98% of the population worldwide um, actually live within their comfort zone. You know, this is our safe place. This is our, um, this is our sort of where, the area where we're kind of mooching along like everybody else um, and we're kind of, you know, secure in this space. And what I would like to, um, for you to explore is what's going on on the outside of this circle where we start to go for our dreams, um, explore new things, uh, make different choices and um, choose, uh, get, get used to change and embrace the unknown and um, work towards uh, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone because that's kind of where 2% of the population live. Now, the next slide will give you an idea as to what happens on 
um, that 2% outside your comfort zone. And I believe that that's where all the magic happens. So we really need to um, let that magic flow and we need to help step outside of our comfort zone more and more. Think of it like an elastic band. So as you're in your comfort zone, the elastic band can only go a certain way. But once we get used to stepping out of our comfort zone and um, work within that, it starts to get comfortable again. And then what happens is that elastic band starts to stretch a bit more. So our capacity starts to grow and expand as well. And that's how you move forward in life, by keep expanding. So um, my message there is don't let the noise of other people's opinions drown out your own inner voice. Listen to, listen to your intuition. Listen to what it is that you want um, and that you want to go for um, out there uh, living outside of your comfort zone and have the courage to follow your heart and listen to that inner wisdom and step outside mm -hmm. your comfort zone um, as, as uh, regularly as you can because that's where it, 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 uh, all the magic happens. So in life, we've got two choices really. We can live the life and let life happen for us or we can create our own destiny and choose which direction we want our lives to go in. And that's one of my favourite um, quotes from Jim, the, the master himself, Jim Rohn. So any, any books, any YouTube clips that you can watch on Jim Rohn is highly entertaining as well. And, and uh, Hayley, I, I, I just, just to uh, hook on what you have mentioned just now is that I would say that don't let the opinion of other people become much more important than the opinion of you of yourself so a lot of time like like uh like like my case as this came my case uh um uh my parents opinion my father's opinion uh my uh society's opinion some some sort it depends on where you where i focus on so if i always think that hey, uh like the, the 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 question the right answer always start with the right question first it is not the answer will not come yet but you need to have the answer if your question is how can i achieve these things then you you will find ways how can you achieve it and there's another way to this question as well how what will happen if i plan to go and achieve this thing so the question is very crucial and and that that is the that fits our mind on on that. Of course, there's a choices that I made uh, that we might need to make. And one good news of the comfort zone, I just to say that just like you go and uh, to the gym and exercise, right? You felt that after that your muscle a bit sore, and actually you felt very happy because uh, it is meant to be broken, and only you felt the pleasure out of it. And that's why I said it. Hey. And and just. Uh, just like when you felt that your body is struggling a bit, I felt that is good because if you are struggle, like if you are learning some different language, like uh, uh like what we shared uh last time uh on the the power of uh, the uh, the the atomic habit, when we 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 stress out a bit more on on learning something different, we, say, hey, we struggle a bit, which is good, it means that you are learning something different. If not, <laughs> you are just the same you, uh there. And uh, before I move on, there's a question from uh, Shijun said that uh, could we get a slide after this? Of I, I, yeah, <laughs> okay. So, uh, Haley, later I will uh, grab this PDF, this thing, and I'll share it with the folks here, okay? Sure. Yeah, in, in I a, think so. when, um, when making decisions, there's really two questions that are the most important questions. And, and they are, um, what will happen if I do whatever it is you want to, you're thinking about and what will happen if I don't. Mm. And it's usually then that is what will help you realise which path, the intuition that you know is right that you need to do because it's more the what will happen if that, that inspires us and motivates us because that's, what's, um, that's what helps us to go for our goals. And then what will happen if we don't is 
well, I'll still be stuck where I am now, or um, I, I you know, won't be happy, won't be fulfilled, won't be getting what I want. Um, so it's what will happen if I do, and what will happen if I don't. Two really important questions when you're uh, trying to make up a decision, make up your mind on something. Mm, that's a good tip. Really. That's, <laughs> uh, next one. <laughs> Ah, okay, so now we're into the world of um, mind power, the fourth step, and that's building on that right attitude and learning the secrets of mind power. So um, here's a quote here from William James, who wrote The Principles of Psychology, and, um, and he's probably known as sort of the, the great-grandfather now of psychology um, that we know of to, in today's world. And he says that human beings, by changing their inner attitudes of their minds can change outer aspects of their lives. And everything starts on the first, first on our inside, in our mind. And that's because we do everything twice. So we do everything in our minds first, we rehearse it in our minds first, and then it plays out in our world. So I want to do a demonstration with you now to um, help you um, to demonstrate that. So just, just for instance, you knew um, last night that you were coming to the book, the book club this morning. So you already had in your mind, oh, that's right, I've got to log on and to the 1010 book club and I'm looking forward to it and you knew what room you were going to be uh, seated in, how you were going to have your um, your laptop set up. Um, you know, you know, you knew to get your drink of water ready before the session. Um, you already had planned that out in your mind before you even woke up this morning. So we do everything twice. So I'd like you just to close your eyes for a moment, and I would like you to imagine that you're standing at your front door. And I want you to imagine your door and just uh, ask yourself, um, is your door in front of you or is it to the side? You're sort of seeing your, your front door nice and vividly. And now I want you to do is, uh, uh, while you're sitting there with your eyes closed, just point to where the door handle is. So you're seeing your front door and you're pointing to the door handle if it has a door handle. And I want you to point to where the lock is as well. Imagining where all of that is. And I want you to imagine that you're actually opening the door. And which way do you actually turn the handle? Does it, does it, do you turn the lever up or down or is it a clockwise movement, that it's a door knob. Just imagine what you're doing when you're opening your door. And do, do you actually open the door forward to walk in, or do you need to slide the door to the side, or do you need to bring the door towards you and then step through the door? So imagine this as we're, as we're talking about it. And now what about turning the key? I want you to imagine that you're putting your key in the lock, and you're turning the key. And you can see yourself doing this, can't you? Um, and it's just an amazing way uh, you're imagining yourself turning that key. And if you have a doorbell or a door knocker, then just um, uh, imagine what that sound is like. What does your doorbell sound like? What does the door knocker sound like? Or if someone knocks on your door, what does the sound usually sound like? So just open your eyes again, come back into the room, and it's just a really quick exercise to show you how we play out everything that we do in our mind um, the first time and that we know how to do it and imagine it. And it's really helpful to um, this little exercise if we're unsure of something or if we're learning a new technique or a new skill. You can learn to run the movie of seeing yourself do that task or that activity or perform that skill 
you can run it like a movie in your mind beforehand and you can see yourself um, performing that skill, that activity, uh, even if it's public speaking, anything. And you can run it through your mind like a movie and you'll find that it's much easier then to do it in person. Haley, this is a good good tips uh, like uh, running it in the movie. So uh, as an engineer, the question is how long should I run it in my mind? <laughs> as long <laughs> as you need. Tips? Actually, one of, the, one of the best ways is um, if you are wanting a successful outcome, then you need to run the movie right the way through till the end where you have the, the outcome that it is that you're, you're wanting. So, um, so to, to the end, to the end where the, the successful outcome is. If uh, for those that are, I think this is a good good thing that I come to my mind is that for those that have not read, read uh, there's a book from uh, Charles Duhigg, which is called The Power of Habit. Inside that book, they mentioned about uh, this fellow called, I believe the name is uh, Michael Felt, the the, oh, the, uh, yes. uh, the Olympic swimmer. Is this from Australia? <laughs> yes, yes. Eight, eight, <laughs> eight Olympic golds in one Olympic. Mm. That, that is how, how he, he trained himself every day to get that. And uh, the next story about the mindset is when we back to the 1945, uh, when we called about the uh, Roger Bannister who ran the, I, I believe in your book, you mentioned that as well, the ran the, uh, what is that? The uh, one? The, the, four, uh, the four minute mile. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He was the first to break through. I mean, people said you can't, you can't run um, a mile in, in under uh, four minutes. And, and he broke the record. But the thing about that was, once he had broken the record, four other people also broke the record within that same year. Because once the belief system was there, once people had seen it happen, they believed they could do it. Um, so what, it, what running a movie in your own mind does, it helps to reinforce belief in your own ability to achieve what it is that you're wanting. So um, we use athletes as a, an example all the time for this because if an athlete is on the starting line, they run a visual movie in their mind of seeing themselves run the race and win the race and cut through the ribbon first. And they run through that hundreds and hundreds of times uh, to build a belief in themselves of crossing the finish line first. So really powerful to practice rehearsing in your own mind before you do something. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> to the next one. <laughs> Great. Ah, now, so which brings us on to a, a topic that um, stops us in our tracks many times, and that is our fears. So step five is learning to build a bit of courage to help you break through um, any fears that you have. Now, we all have fears from time to time and, um, and acknowledging them is the first step to uh, breaking through. Um, so whether your fears are sometimes fear of failure, sometimes we fear success because that's what keeps us stuck and safe. Sometimes we have fear of losing face amongst our friends and our peers. Losing money is a big one right now, uh, especially for people in business. Um, fear of public speaking is probably the number one fear um, uh, globally on the planet and fear of, you know, getting into business, you know, moving away from a corporate environment to, to business, really, really common fears. And, um, and learning to overcome those fears so that you can step into what it is that you're wanting in life is does take a bit of courage. But let's take a look yep. at the next slide so that I can explain for, for you what fear really is. Anyone that have a burning fear, I, I encourage you to just step in the chat box so that you really face it uh, head on. Oh, yes. yes. And, and, uh, and step in the chat box. I think there's interest in, interesting to he, listen from the audience if you would. And, uh, and perhaps this might be a good practice as well when you go through uh, uh, the, the, the guided session later. I think this might be good. Yes, if you have any fear, just put it in. And, uh, okay, yes, which, which one of these is resonating with you? Um, do you have something else uh, that, that you're fearful of right now? 
um, share it with us and have the courage to share it with us because that's the first step. <laughs> uh, fear of uh, putting in the fear. Yeah, fear of putting, yeah, yeah, fear of, of, of acknowledging, yes. yes. Yeah. So the next one, yeah, the next slide okay. actually explains for you what, we, what I call fear. Fear is false expectations appearing real. So it's really all in our mind what we fear. And that's because 90% of what we fear actually never happens. 90% never happens when we're fearful of something. And there's something called 3% um, uh, of what will happen, and that's called bad luck. So we can't do anything about that either. That's just what we call bad luck. So that leaves 7%. And 7% could happen. So if we just focus on what could happen so that we can actually mentally prepare so that we know what to do if we're faced with that, then we're much more prepared, we're better equipped, and we're less overwhelmed um, and fearful. So just focus on what we can control. Okay, next. Okay. So building courage is all about uh, feeling the fear and do it anyway, because um, so long as we um, uh, hang on to the fear, we can't push through. So if we feel the fear and we acknowledge, okay, yes, this is giving me butterflies. Um, and when you mentally go through the process, actually do the process, you'll find out when you get to the other side and you get the outcome that you want. Wow, I did it. Um, and that the, the fear will dissolve and you'll get better and better at it. And that's how we get better at skills. Um, we get better at everything that we do by consistency and um, continually practicing. So um, uh, practice makes doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. So we need to keep practicing. And it's also not your personal history or your past that makes you who you are, it's actually how you respond to it. Hmm. So that's a real aha moment, that one for me, um, that we can choose our response to anything that happens in our life um, from our past or from our um, what's happening right now. And, uh, so I hope that helps. Pra practice is also a double-edged sword. Uh, and, and I believe in the book you mentioned about uh, practice make permanent. It, 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 it also depends on what you choose to practice, right? If you choose to practice negativity, you've got a whole lot of negativity. So, so also choose the right things to practice. Choose the right things to practice. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, the sixth thing, we, we've already touched on this. Um, it's what I call the human touch. And this is my favorite uh, because What's been fascinating to me during COVID is all of a sudden, as humans, we've not been allowed to connect with one another, hug each other, welcome our loved ones with a big hug, uh, say goodbye with a hug. Um, but what we've done is we've adapted in this um, distancing, social distancing world we now live in, we've adapted to elbow uh, connections, haven't we? So we've found a way to connect with one another by adapting. By and so that's just amazing to me that we still need personal uh, human connection and human touch. It's so so important. And as Billy mentioned before, when we talked about um, having a positive attitude, that it is infectious and even smiling is infectious. And I usually, in my trainings, I, I give everyone one whole minute to smile. And in the room, and until your, your cheeks are aching, um, if any of you have, uh, are married, then you'll know what it's like to have uh, the photographers um, with you all day and smiling, and your face aches from smiling all day. But what happens when you smile is it's infectious, 
and it rubs off on other people. And if you were sharing your beautiful faces with me right now, I know <laughs> that you would be smiling. <laughs> and there we are. I've made Billy laugh. So, <laughs> so you know, really, smiling is infectious. So I would encourage you, um, even now that we're able to sort of move up around a little bit more, is put a smile on your face when you're going outside um, because that can really touch somebody's heart and make their day. And um, uh, so smile and make, smile to a stranger and see the response that you get back uh, when a smile um, makes a difference to someone's lives. So, and I love this little quote here from Mark Twain, I can live two months on a single compliment. So now that we're getting back into uh, seeing each other, even in a social distancing environment, um, compliment one another. Gosh, it's great to see you. You look really well. You look really healthy. And lockdown's been good for you. Uh, I can see you've been working out at home. <laughs> you know, everybody's been mad on the uh, YouTube videos on um, uh, working out. So we've probably forgotten uh, what we looked like before, and now we're, we're fighting fit. So compliment one another on how, um, how we are uh, enjoying being in their company uh, when you do get the opportunity to be face-to-face um, -face with people. So that's uh, my, that's my uh, human touch. So I hope that that resonates with you because it's really so important that we still keep connecting with one another. And these are my seven laws of the mind. All of these laws in the mind, by the way, will be part of um, Think and Grow Rich, the Napoleon Hill book. And um, so um, these are all part of that book. And uh, each one of these principles is a whole you know, uh, training session within itself. Um, but this is basically the laws of the mind that you can uh, live by and that our thoughts are forces and they determine what frequency what frequency we are on. And um, Billy, you mentioned earlier about you can choose your thoughts. So you can choose whether to keep that negative thought and stay negative, or you can choose to do what I call change your frequency and um, ch choose a different path. And what happens is when, um, when we're on a negative path, we attract more negative thoughts and that attracts more negative thoughts and until something negative happens in our life. And then what we do in our mind is we say, I knew that would happen. And then what we say is, um, bad things go in threes and we wait for the second bad thing to happen. And then, then we reaffirm that and we say, I knew that would happen. And then we say, I'm waiting for the third thing to go wrong and we wait for that to happen. The thing is, we can choose way back when we have that first thought, negative thought, and we can choose to push it away, and we can choose a more positive thought, a thought that's more resourceful, that's going to send us on a better frequency. Because essentially our mind is a sending and receiving station of thought. So think of yourself that way. Um, I'm also, even in a virtual world, sending out vibrations. I'm sending out to you um, my positivity, and that's become your being affected by that. So we are sending and receiving our energy um, and our thoughts and our frequencies to one another as well. So really important to remember that that's how we influence one another. And Billy, before, sorry, yeah. before I move on, right? So uh, I think uh, your microphone should, should be uh, like, it's, it's dropping on your shirt, it kind of a squeaking sound. I think you, yeah. You bring, bring it up a little? Bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, so, it, 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 it is okay just now, uh, just that I think you animated too, too much. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> and then sorry, it was everyone. dropping the shirt. <laughs> yeah. Too much fine. movement. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think um, just, you just leave it there. It should be fine. It's, it's fine. fine. Okay. Uh, yeah. the, the earlier one is fine, but uh, after lately, the, the sound become much more. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. And the third one that many of you will be familiar with, it's the law of attraction. So many of you will be familiar with the secret. And 
the law of attraction is just one chapter that's within Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. So there is a whole, um, you know, a lot of information on uh, how we attract um, those thoughts and the people um, that we want to attract. And, and uh, so let's attract positive uh, and, um, uh, and people that we want to surround ourselves with, like-minded people. Let's attract those within our circle um, and not those who are going to detract um, uh, and move us away from where we want to go. And law of control is similar in that we can choose to control our thoughts and uh, choose to control that which we want to um, hold on to. And I'm just going to skip to six. Law of connection is all about uh, connecting with one another and uh, what we choose to, who we choose to connect ourselves with. And law of exclusion is what we choose to leave out. So I'll give you an example for the law of exclusion. As everyone here is um, loves reading and is a book lover, this one's nice and easy. So you choose to read a book at certain times rather than watch, tape, watch television. So that is your choice of excluding TV to read instead. So exercise your law of exclusion in choosing um, what your choice will be, one thing over another, um, and, and we want to um, uh, build your mindset. So reading is perfect for that, uh, not detract from your mindset. So we want to grow uh, a growth mindset. And the law of insertion is actually what we're going to do next. And the law of insertion is about um, putting into your future what you want to uh, achieve in your life. So we're going to do an exercise that's called working on your timeline. And we all have a timeline. I think the next, yes, we have, we all have a past when we grew up from the time we were a little baby right through to now where we're sitting here in our chairs on this webinar and we all have a future. Now we all actually have things um, and engagements and um, even things planned next week in our calendars, in our work calendars, in our private lives um, that we know is coming up in our future. And we've already scheduled it in our calendars and we know that it's already there and it's coming up. So we all have a past, we all have a now, and we all have a future. Everybody's timeline is a little bit different. So the next diagram will just explain for you that uh, I want to help you determine where your own personal timeline is. So it will indicate a direction. So, if I asked you to think about a time in the past, a memory of your childhood, and I want you to think about that image of yourself, that situation, that time in your past when you were a child, and I want you to think about and bring up that image in your mind, just in your imagination. And that image will pop up and indicate a direction of where that image has come from. And for some people, that image is, when we talk in the past, is from behind us. For some people, it is to the side of us. For some people, it is actually out in front of us, to the left or to the right. So, um, so think about where your image comes from and the direction that it indicates to you when you think about that time when you're a child. So do you all have, uh, can you point to that in your imagination, point to where that image pops up from? Yes? Great, great. So that what's interesting, Billy and I have done this exercise before 
And what's interesting, Billy, it's the same, isn't it? It's come yeah. up in the same direction. Yeah. yeah. So for Billy, his past image. And uh, is... sorry, Haley. Uh, take note on your microphone again. Just <laughs> maybe you need to go up a bit. Yeah. I think it turns around. I think that's oh, what it is. Oh, okay. okay. Ah. Yeah. All right. For, okay. Bi for Billy, his image is out in front of him left. and over to the left. Yep. Yes. So that's his past. So now I want you to think about something that you've got coming up in the future. Um, and I want you to think about what that is, what that event is. It can even be next week. It can even be tomorrow. And think about that particular event and think about where that image, the direction that that image comes to you from. So now you have a, an image that's coming from a different direction. So now if you actually pointed from through a line, an imaginary line from point A, your past, to point B, your future, and draw an imaginary line, then that is your timeline. Okay? So for Billy... Hey, hey, hey. Hey, yeah. I'm curious, I'm curious. Yeah. Is it just me that pops on the left? Um, maybe to, to the rest, right? Can you let me know if, if is it only me left to right? Or, or what is your your timeline? Is is it the front? front yeah, front yeah. And, it's, and it's different for everybody. It's yeah. different for everybody. <laughs> and um, there's no right or wrong. It just is what your imagination has, has brought up for you when you see images. And um, for some people, it cuts through your body um, as, as back to front and, and from side to, um, mm. yeah. And, or it it's comes through you horizontally or, or out in front of you. Um, so the purpose for that is to help us with this next guided exercise. And um, I just want you to just move forward one slide, uh, Billy. Let me just see what I've got the next slide. Okay, so now we're going to actually go into your future. And I want you to think about a goal that you have for yourself. And it doesn't have to be a big goal. It can be a small goal. And I want you to, we're going to do a little exercise now that is going to help you insert that goal purposefully into your future. So. I want you to all just shift in your chairs a little bit. So however you've been sitting, just wriggle Can a little you, bit. I think it's worthwhile for them to uh, really spend some time in get their goal, right? It might be okay. your financial goal. It might be your relationship goal. It might be your uh, work goal. It might be uh, whatever goal, right? So so I think just, just spend some time because this, sure. this, this step Good is idea. crucial. This is crucial for the next step, right? This is okay. crucial for the next step. So yes, um, <laughs> you, it, this could be in any aspect or area, area or area of your wheel of life. So yeah. think about your health and fitness. It could be your spirituality. It could be your relationships. It could be your family. It could be your business, your finances. It could be your work. It could be your professional life. It could be uh, your personal life. So pick one area of your wheel of life and set for yourself a goal. Doesn't have to be a big goal, but if you have a big one, that's great too. And just think about what it is that you want to improve, what you're aiming for, for that aspect of your life that you want to make happen in your future. So if everyone has a goal, just quickly type yes in the chat so we can start to get some yeses and we know that you're ready for us to move forward. Set yourself a goal. Are we getting some yeses, Billy? Yeah, got me, say yes. Uh, Billy, say yes. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, this this is crucial because I think uh, uh, it is very impactful that you can uh, experience it for yourself because it is something that you need to experience. It's, it's not something that you would able to, Haley would not able to tell you what is that feeling is, right? So this this is crucial and uh, you find it very beneficial even up to now, right? 
I, I think we did it last month. Up to now, I yes. can still visualize it. And this is how powerful it is. Yeah. Great. That's great. Awesome. Okay. All right. So now that you all have your goal, uh, something that you're wanting to achieve in the future, even short term or longer term, I want you to think about that. And we're going to do um, something that's a little bit magical because NLP is experiential and a little bit magical. And I'm going to ask you to use your active imagination. And we're going to take you on a little magic carpet ride. And we're going to go into that time in the future. So I want you all to feel a bit more comfortable in your chair. If you have your feet um, uh, um, just placed on the floor, both feet nice and firmly um, anchored to the floor, that's great. And just, just rest your hands in your lap and start to just feel really comfortable in your seat. And I want you to take a nice deep breath in. And exhale out slowly. And another deep breath in. That's good. And out. I want you just to relax your shoulders. I want you to bring your shoulders up to your ears. Bring them up and now just drop them loosely down. And then just wiggle your shoulders around and around. Just take that tension away from the neck. Nice. Nice. Just nice and comfortable. Beautiful. Now I want you to imagine, see yourself through your own eyes with your eyes closed. And I want you to see yourself sitting in your chair as you are now. And all of a sudden, magic carpet actually appears underneath your feet. And I want you to settle onto that carpet. Know that you're right, nice and comfortable and safe and secure. And that magic carpet is going to take you up and rise above, um, above you and move you along your timeline and it's going to take you up in the air and it's going to take you exactly in the direction that you need to go in, in your timeline to your future. And the beauty with your magic carpet ride is it knows exactly where to go. And you're up in the air and you're moving along your timeline into your future and you arrive at that destination and you're above that time in your future where you've achieved your goal and you're hovering above that time and you're on your magic carpet and you're looking down through your own eyes at that event and you can see yourself having achieved your goal and your dream for yourself that you set for yourself in your future and I want you to use your active imagination in seeing what it is that you can see when you look down at that event and you can see yourself having achieved your goal. And if you notice colors, notice how vivid they are and notice what colors they are. If you hear sounds in your picture that you can see of yourself, notice what sounds are around you. If you see other people in your picture, then notice who they might be. Some people you might not have met yet, but just notice that they are there. And anything else that you can notice that you can see yourself at when you're watching yourself having achieved your goal. And what you will find is you will have picked up a certain quality along the way of having achieved your goal. You could have picked up more confidence. You may have achieved a certain skill. You may have achieved a certain level of confidence, aspiration of belief. What is the quality that you have picked up along the way that you can now see of yourself um, that is more heightened? And give that a name so that you know what it is for you. Confidence, skill, belief. 
And now I want you to move a little further into the future past that event on your magic carpet. Just go a little bit further into the future. And I want you to do a U-turn on your magic carpet and look back now at yourself, seeing yourself at that event where you achieved your goal, seeing yourself along your timeline and seeing yourself sitting in this chair. And I want you to just send a little bit of gratitude for the people that have helped you get to where you want wanted to go. And I want you to see also that how much brighter your future looks, at seeing yourself having achieved your goal in your future. And I want you to acknowledge the fact that you have more of that quality now that you're further ahead in your future of that quality that you had when you achieved that goal. It's even more heightened now. It's grown, you've developed, you're continuing to grow. And your belief system is growing too. And I want you to take all of this back to you as you now move back to now on your magic carpet and float all the way back into your body and back to your chair. And I want you to acknowledge that you have that quality with you now. It was there with you all along. You've just seen how you have been able to uh, draw upon that skill and that quality more and more, and that has really helped you towards the achievement of your goal. So when you're ready, you can open your eyes, come back into the room, and I want you to share with us what that experience was like for you. What was it like to go out there into your future and to really see in vivid colour, see yourself achieving that goal? It's a really powerful exercise to do because it shows you that anything is possible, that you can do it, and it really helps to shape your belief in yourself. And, and can help you really push through any fears of uncertainty um, that you might have. So Billy, how was that for you the second time around? Did you pick a different goal? Mm, no, I, I, the, the, the same thing <laughs> come to my mind. <laughs> the same thing come to my mind. I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a good one that... Um, uh... What was the quality that you picked up along the way? Can you share that with us? Uh, that is a good question. For now, I think I just enjoy the the scenery, you know, <laughs> rather than uh, picking up any things along the way this this round. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Anyone else wanted to share? I think I think this is a good feedback, right? So um, that that uh, that you we we can share and then and then learn 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 things together. Anyone? And and if you're if ever you're uncertain or you've not done something before like if you're learning a new skill you can do this exercise it takes it it takes minutes to do and you can practice it and rehearse it in your mind and um you can even practice uh seeing yourself do the task or the activity and it's so much easier to do than in real life and it's really really powerful and you can actually put things in your future um, that you want in your future. So you can keep filling up. It's like filling up your bucket. You can keep filling up your bucket full of beautiful things um, and beautiful things in your future by setting yourself uh, uh, more and more goals. And uh, Haley, just now you mentioned about the goal can be a small goal or big goal, right? So I believe that you are so using this this timeline therapy in, in your life and I want to ask you is that uh, what 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 is the things that you would you would do like say I, I'm not sure probably maybe last week did, did, did you do something like this last week and what is it and what is the change what is the impact that you are seeing probably to okay aspect. I have um I believe in uh, routine and making little routines habits so that it becomes a part of you and it becomes you internalize it and it becomes habitual and that's why you know that's why they're called habits and that's why we say it takes 
you know, something from uh, 20 days, seven days to form a new habit, 20 days, 30 days to form a new habit. We need to do certain things consistently for it to become natural for us. So I have a daily habitual routine that in the morning um, I do a daily walk and during that walk I set myself intentions for the day and I ask myself what do I want to achieve today? What is the one thing that I need to do that will get me closer to my goal? Um, and then what, uh, what do I um, need to do for the rest of the week so that I have something to look forward to? And then I have a gratitude session where I say, now who am I most grateful for for helping me along this journey? And who am I looking forward to working with that is going to help me? And so I'm always looking at uh, forward things. And then I know when I get back from my walk, the first what exactly the first thing that I need to do is. So whether you write down a to-do list or whether you play it out in your mind, it, this is a habitual thing that I do every day so that I know that I am actioning and I am moving one step closer towards what it is that I want. And, and then at the end of the day, just before you go to sleep, when you're doing a little relaxation, a bit of breathing work, then I recap the day and I say, what am I most proud of? And it's usually that I stuck to my goal and I, I did a, a achieve that step that I wanted to make and that I'm now the next step forward further. And who am I grateful for? Who um, send a little gratitude? And, um, and I always trust in my unconscious mind to help me work through any problems. Because if, um, you know, when you're in a problem, sometimes you, you're in it, you can't see what, how to get out of that problem. And we tend to say things like, um, oh, I just need to sleep on it. And we use that in our language. We say, I'll just sleep on that problem. I'm not sure what to do, whether to do this or whether to do that. And we say, I'm just going to sleep on it. What we do when we say that is we're trusting in our unconscious mind to help us work through the options. And what happens is it comes out in our dreams and our unconscious mind helps us to work through the pros and the cons and we can wake up with real clarity in the morning. So the idea is to have a fantastic restful night's sleep and let our unconscious mind do the work for us and we can wake up with real clarity. So I use my unconscious mind for that. Many people choose to journal and write down um, literally uh, on a piece of paper the pros and the cons to help them work through a problem and so there is lot there are lots of different techniques to use but what i would like for you to do is practice a very simple morning ritual and evening ritual where you're asking yourself three questions what am i most proud of what what who who do i want to give thanks to and what am i most looking forward to they're the three questions yep well, very uh, good summary to the, the three three key questions. Yeah. And uh, Haley, I believe that we are uh, near to the end. I, I want to open up to the folks on the call. Do you have any questions, uh, clarifying questions? I would Perhaps love the questions. Your, yeah, sharing of your experience. I would love to see your faces more. <laughs> <laughs> You can also tap on the chat on the chat box as well, but I not see anyone have a questions yet. So we we'll share the slides for you, um, and even um, even there might be a little confusion in your mind over what you've you've heard today, and that's okay too because a little bit of confusion um, indicates that you're learning, so mm -hmm. that's a good thing too. So even if you take one thing from today. Um, if you could share that with us in the chat, what is the one thing that you learned today that is 
you, you're going to take away and it's going to make a difference for you. Uh, I'd love for you to share that with us as well. Yeah. Because as we said with learning, with reading a book, um, there, if, if we, by reading and learning, we learn one thing um, and we implement it in our life, and it makes a positive change for us in our life, then it's worth it. Hmm. Okay, Fong said I like, I, I don't know what that means. Maybe some feedback from my side. Uh, my, my name is Fong Ning, I can call me Eddie. I really like the uh, the session where you actually ask us to imagine, you know, the magic carpet, right? I think that that's my favorite, where you actually extract your conscious self, you know, and and seeing yourself in the future and then uh, especially the appreciation part sometimes you forgot that uh, how hard the journey is and being able to appreciate uh, I'm not sure it's the right word what, it, in hindsight where it's like in retrospective the way yes. that you imagine it in retrospective it, I think it gives a lot of uh, a lot of perspective and a lot of uh, meaning in, in the journey itself yeah, we'll, we'll thank like to thank, yeah, we'll like to thank you for that, for that, for that fresh new perspective, which I've, uh, I've never had that before. Right. Pleasure. That's, that's fantastic. So, so maybe some um, that daily little ritual of reflection um, and um, um, what you're most proud of, because we forget to actually give ourselves a pat on the back and say, well done, well done you. Um, and, and sometimes it's the little things. Um, and if we're proud of ourselves and we learn to like ourselves, then we can be better for other people as well. So um, sometimes we need to get out of our own heads and, uh, um, and reflect and be more grateful and, um, and, and learn the lessons and, and, and that, that's what helps us to move forward um, in, in life. So, so fantastic, well done. Really, there's a good feedback uh, and also reiterate on what have you you had mentioned just now uh, from K Fong. He said that uh, what will happen if I do and what also will happen if I don't. I think you think that's oh, fantastic. Yes, uh, yes. Christine mentioned I learned my immediate goal for the very near future I'm concerned about. Yeah, that's that is good. And 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 perhaps if you have questions uh, later on, I if like. Christine, if you have a question that you might ask, with your permission, Haley may people also uh, uh, reach out to you if, 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 if they have some questions that they, they want to ask regarding to what the, uh, the experience and how to do that thing. Please, yeah, yes, love to. Uh, who, who is Did that? someone Christine? have a question? Yeah, Christine. Yeah, uh, uh, if people want to ask more about my what I experienced just now, feel free uh, to talk to me offline. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks, Christine. You plan. Uh, Jyoti said you plan the day while doing walking and planning to set uh, a reading for a routine for reading books by cutting down the TV. There, there it goes. Hey, Haley, that's a. Uh, uh, Jyoti the is law of exclusion. The, the law of exclusion. <laughs> that's great. Yes. Yes. Uh, oh. I, Sometimes it is. Uh, it's about what we need to take out, um, not not put in. What we need to take out that makes us more um, uh, fruitful and uh, purposeful. Yeah. So it's Thank the you. little things. Take note of the little things. Take note of um, your thoughts and um, think to yourself: Is that thought uh, resourceful or not resourceful? Yeah. And if it's resourceful, keep doing more of it. Keep thinking more of the same thoughts and you will find yourself on more of that trajectory of uh, frequency of good thoughts. So really be mindful of the thoughts that you're thinking and then how your thoughts are impacting um, because your thoughts will impact and play out in your in your real life. Haley, that's a good question from Ya Jing. Uh, she's asking uh, if she wanted to rewrite again the magic carpet exercise what is the next step she can do <laughs> yeah do you have okay a... so now you need to um write you need to write down what it was that you saw and sort of do a little story journal what it is that you saw because the more vivid you can make your um story and the more uh, colorful words that you can put in 
that you can see what you see what you saw hear what you hear and um, experience it in words then you're really then connecting um, you're connecting everything you're connecting your imagery you're connecting your mind you're connecting your emotions and by writing it down in a story form you're actually reconnecting it to your mind and emotions you're connecting the two and that's what gives us motivation and that's what means you will then be able to put together a plan of action step by step that will help you work towards the attainment of that goal so write yourself a whole story about what what it was that you saw um, and how it made you feel what what you um, uh, what you heard, uh, the people that were there, and really write a story, and that will make it come to life for you. Yeah. Did Did that answer your question, uh, Yajin? Yes. Yes. Okay. But I, I think just just on, on just on that, you know, it's it's all about working backwards. Mm -hmm. So we've been out there in your future. So now what you need to do is work backwards. And so you now need to think about, to get that goal, what, what is the halfway step? And what do I need to do to get to that halfway step? Mm. And then once you find out that halfway step, then what do I need to do to get to that halfway step? So what's the quarter step that I need to take? So then you have a, um, a timeline that is uh, broken into segments and that helps you then to break it down into weekly, daily tasks. So work yeah. backwards from that. Yeah. We have yeah. a hardcore fan, uh, Wen Chin, uh, from the Ten Ten Book Club. Uh, he, uh, she liked this thing is that uh, uh, the part of fear, and now uh, you mentioned about ninety nine percent, ninety percent of what you actually fear doesn't happen. So why fear that fear, right? So this is a, it's a good recap as well. Simple, yeah? <laughs> and, and, but it makes a difference. Now that you know that and you're aware of that, it makes a, such a big difference to how you approach something that you haven't done before um, because you think differently about it now. Um, now that you know that, well, 90% of what I'm worrying about won't happen. Yeah. Mm. So, are we? Do we have time for the Kahoot exercise, yeah. Billy? Yeah. So, I, I, I see if there's an, any more questions here because we are going to do a Kahoot session with some uh, questions that we prepared uh, for you, just just to refresh your mind on what we have learned today. Any question before I move on? I think. Hey, okay, I have a question actually for Haley. So uh, when she mentioned about the comfort zone and uh, maintaining the consistency on daily basis, right? Uh, sometime and often it happens. Uh, uh, it happens like that. Even though if you read uh, quite a few of books, right? Like I have read the books she mentioned in the list, like Seven Habits and uh, you know Power of Positive Thinking. So we'll be maintaining a consistency like on daily basis, and we are following a routine, and suddenly because of unexpected reasons it breaks like you couldn't follow or you couldn't remember like what exactly you are doing because of certain unforeseen uh, conditions maybe due to work or personal health or something so how do you maintain and get back to the exactly the same flow actually it's okay quite that's hard, a great actually. question <laughs> great question and i think the best answer for you is don't be hard on yourself because what happens is um, if we if we're on an exercise or a diet regime and we fall off the wagon, we tend to beat ourselves up and be really hard on ourselves, and just accept that that's happened, and um, and be okay with it, and then you're able to then say, okay, that's okay, I'll just start tomorrow. So don't be hard on yourself, don't beat yourself up because you'll waste time and energy beating yourself up just acknowledge it and accept it and set yourself a new start date and start again so it's how we respond um, and how we um, 
the steps that we take to keep ourselves moving in a forward direction. So it's okay. And so that's okay. When will I start again and, and restart again? And if you fall off again, that's okay. I'm getting better each time I, each time I do it. It's like um, quitting, quitting smoking. Uh, if, if any smokers out there, you know, you actually get better at giving up each time you attempt it. So the key is to keep trying, keep moving forward, keep setting a, a new start date and you'll get better and better at it. Okay, thanks, thanks, Haley. Because sometimes it's uh, uh, more to us emotionally, you know, like uh, just because you can't keep it up. Yeah, and, and but we, we, we are mad at ourselves and we are down at ourselves uh, because of it. Um, but it, that's just life. Uh, so if we accept that and uh, and just set ourselves a new target to start, yeah, keep keep trying, keep moving forward. Yeah, thanks, Hedy. You're welcome. All right, that is all the time that we have for today. Remember to reach out to Haley James if you have any questions that you wanted to ask. Haley James International at gmail dot com. Haley James International in one words at gmail.com. We will catch up again next time in our yet another 1010 book club sharing. Thank you and see you again.